cats that are good guys, but I don't I don't want to open that door. I don't want to, how many people here own cats in this room here? Cat owners, okay, okay, we got a couple, okay. So you know, you don't want to be chasing Fluffy around your house being like, okay, Fluffy, what do you think? How you doing there? And the cat's like, meow, and then it's like, look at my butthole. What? Meow. I'm ignoring you because your breath smells like a hobo farted in it. I'll murder you if you were smaller. <laughs> look at my butthole. <laughs> I'll eat your face when you die. <laughs> you look like... <laughs> that sofa looks valuable. Why don't I scratch the shit out of it? <laughs> and pee on it. Ah, <laughs> oh, your tears nourish me. <laughs> oh, that's a new one. I'm to... <laughs> I just kept thinking like, Jesus Christ. Who would put themselves through that? That dark hole, man. I, uh, yeah, and I, uh, I'm trying to in my in my in my uh, in my 40s now. I'm trying to step away from technology as much as possible. And one of the nicest things about getting engaged is uh, is that I'm finally able to step away from those uh, dating sites, those Woo. apps like Tinder and Flimber and Bumble and too many goats and not enough fish, or whatever the hell you kids are fucking to on the internet today. I don't know, man. I can't, I can't get behind. It's, it's not. It's not my thing, man. I'm like the product of Irish immigrants. I need a little romance. It can't just be like swipe, fuck, run, herpes, bye. You know, like, there's got to be a little more mystery, a little more poetry to it. You know. I wanted to have a story. I knew. I knew. I knew before I. Uh, I, I. I got the ring for. Uh, for. For my best girl. I, uh, I realized I wanted to have like a romantic story for how we met, like my parents had. Like, you ever listen to your parents, your grandparents tell a story about how they met, and it's so much more romantical than any of your shit? They'd be like, well, I went home from the war, and then I was down at Santa Monica, and she was taking tickets at the Ferris wheel, and I gave her four daisies, and six months later, your brother was born. You know what I mean? Like, it's, but it's always like so... The math isn't always good. Sometimes the math is painful, but the story is romantic. But I just, you know, my dad used to get shit-faced on Christmas, and my dad was like off the boat Irishman. Like he was like, if you shook a Lucky Charms box, he would fall out, and run a huge bar tab, and run the fuck out of your house. But, but he would sit next to the Christmas tree on Christmas, and we'd be like, Doc, tell a story about how you met Ma. My dad would be like, Okay, boys, let me tell you the story, okay? Uh, it took place in 1959, right? And me and me 27 brothers found out they were giving away jobs and vaginas in Boston. We took 17 potatoes and we carved them into canoes and we went across the Atlantic in search of employment and possible a uh, hand job from a girl named Maggie. Bee -bee 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 Halfway through, we ran out of supplies and we had to eat Peter, Michael, and Patrick. <laughs> which is why your sister was named after them. <laughs> and, uh, I remember it was my first day of working at the dirt punching factory in Boston. <laughs> my boss sent me to do, the, to do the payroll because I was the only Irish guy of his crew that had all 10 fingers and could count sober. And uh, so my boss sends me to the bank, yeah? And when I'm standing in line at the bank, I see the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my whole life. She had red hair and green eyes and an ass you could put a Guinness on. And I see her and I think, Jesus, how could a poor immigrant Irishman ever pitch the wool to such a princess? So you know what I done, boys. I took that check and I've done what every needle-dicked Irishman had done since the dawn of time. I turned it over and I wrote a poem on the back of it. I said, I Billy die. Your eyes are like green clovers, blue diamonds, and purple horseshoes. Hey, Billy day. I'll lick your pussy like it's made of Jameson's. He did not write that. He did not write that. I, I did not write it. He wrote a lovely poem, which I've never seen. But uh, he wrote a lovely poem on the back of the check. He walks through the partition. He slips the check over to my future mom. And he says, turn it over, love. And she must have thought he was robbing the place. He's like, oh, this isn't a beer belly. It's C4. And I'll blow your tits off. Don't put the cash in the back. 
If the blue ink blows all over me, I'll blow your fucking head off. Love you. There we go. We can make it work. Um, no, I'm like heckling my own story. Uh, what did that happen? Schizophrenia and alcoholism. Hey. Who's cutting his cocaine with ADHD medicine? Uh, <laughs> I'm also available for children's parties. I, um, no. <laughs> so, yeah, so anyway, so my dad takes the check, he hands it to her. My mom turns over the check, does not know who this guy is, reads the poem, tears well up in her eyes. And she looks over at my dad, my dad looks at my mom, my dad says to her, my name is William James Lynch, and I'm from Donegal, Ireland. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Could I please take you to dinner, love? 60 years later, I am the youngest of his six kids telling you that story tonight, Tuesday, in Burbank in California. And it feels pretty fucking good. God bless, thank you, thank you for applauding for my dad. Those are good romantic stories. Again, you young guys throwing your dicks all over the internet. What the fuck are you gonna be saying to your grandkids? With all you feral young guys with your swiping fucks. When you're a grandpa and somebody said, your grandkids say, Grandma, Grandpa, how did you two meet? What the fuck are you gonna say? You're gonna be like, well, gather around, children, and I'll tell you the story. I was at a bar called Barney's Beanery, and no one would fuck me. Not even a hand job from the girl with the meth teeth, no. No, it looked like I was going to go back to my studio apartment for Xbox Tostitos pizza rolls and a handy jerk-off crowd. You had to choose. It was difficult to do it at the same time. Anyway, just when I thought it was curtains for me and my penis, I realized I had my iPhone on me. The iPhone is how we used to communicate in 2019 before the president put the V-chips in our buttholes. We all remember the great reverse horizon fart of 2051. So much fun. And, uh, and where are we going? All right, so, uh, so, so, uh, yes, and so, so I was swiping, I, I, I went onto a, a video called Tinder, I went onto an app called Tinder, and I swiped, and I swiped, and I swiped, to a photograph of ho, after ho, after ho, after ho, after ho, after ho, after ho. More hoes than Santa Claus on Christmas Eve, I'd swipe. And swipe though I might, I simply couldn't find a hoe that was DTF. Luckily, on swipe 975, I swept on a photo of a hoe, and oh, what a hoe she was. She was standing with a rainbow tube top with one titty out. It looked like a nipple was trying to direct traffic. It was, uh, and she was bent over a Ford Fiesta, a pair of Daisy Dukes with the crack of her ass showing. And over the crack of that ass was a tattoo that read, Anything Goes. And I like show tunes, so I swipe to the right, don't you know? And because she liked boys who looked like Drew Carey's corpse, she swiped to the right, too. 27 minutes later, we were having sex in a Taco Bell off the 405. And as I was pumping away at her from behind like humpy hump, at one point she turned around and she looked at me and I looked at her and we knew, we just knew she wasn't pressing charges. <laughs> And that's how your father was born. <laughs> that is my time, folks. Please check out my special on Amazon. My name is Sean Lynch. Take care, y'all.